Let's move to the conflict in Sudan. The number of people facing acute food insecurity has risen sharply as fighting continues between the army and its paramilitary rival. More than 20 million people, or just about 42% of the population, are now facing food shortage, according to the latest analysis by the Integrated Food Security Classification, or IPC. The areas hit worst by the fighting include the capital Khartoum, the western region of Darfur, and parts of Kordofan. Meanwhile, the UN mission in Sudan, UNITAMS, says it's gravely concerned about the severe impact of the fighting on civilians in the Darfur region. The UN mission strongly condemns the indiscriminate targeting of civilian populations and public facilities by the rapid support forces and allied militias, particularly in the locality of Serba, 45 kilometers north of El Jenena in West Darfur. The mission is also concerned by similar incidents in Nyala, South Darfur, and Zelengi, Central Darfur. The UN mission urges all forces engaged in hostilities to cease their military operations immediately and calls on them to resume the Jeddah-facilitated talks. Let's bring in Naba Muhyiddin, who is in the town of Madani in Al Jazeera state in Sudan. Naba, the UN is painting a dire picture of the food situation worsened by the ongoing conflict. What can you tell us from the ground? Um, actually, yes, the picture that UN has uh, uh, issued in their statement, in their recent statement, is uh, real and we can feel it uh, all around us, not only in Khartoum and the intensified regions like Darfur and Kurdufan, but also in other states like Al Jazeera state and in northern Sudan and eastern Sudan. Food crisis uh, is a real challenge for Sudanese people. There is shortages of food supplies. There is shortages of um, wheat and flour. There is a lot of indicators that the, um, the agricultural season uh, may fail. And actually, the, uh, all of the indicators show that the agricultural season is under threat of uh, uh, being uh, not successful. And that will lead to more uh, complicated um, uh, food crisis in the country. So yes, uh, the situation is real, uh, dire, and uh, food crisis is felt everywhere. The shortages are a, a, a daily challenge for everyone in Sudan, not only uh, in the war zones, but also in other uh, regions and states. Right. Uh, where can people go for help, Naba? And also, we've been talking about this crisis for several months now. And so I'm curious to know, are there some parts of the country not touched by either the fighting or the food shortages? Actually, uh, all of the uh, uh, regions and states across Sudan are impacted by the food shortages. Everybody is feeling this. And uh, maybe one of the indicators or maybe one of the reasons is the destructions. Um, the destruction of the factories, all of the food factories were destructed. Khartoum is a business hub and manufacturing hub for all of the businesses and, um, uh, and manufacturing. Uh, manufacturing. Uh, so yes, uh, definitely food crisis is felt. Uh, there is only imported goods from neighboring countries like Egypt and uh, Ethiopia. And now recently there is some food imported from Turkey. Um, but uh, there is no factory that working uh, inside Sudan and um, stable food uh, like wheat and bread is a real challenge as and under control of the uh, local governments everywhere. The government is controlling the wheat uh, to uh, stop the monopoly and uh, the hikes of the prices. But uh, of the fighting there is some safe places. Uh, Al Jazeera state now is safe but it's under threat of being uh, impacted by the war in Khartoum. Northern state, upper northern state is uh, safe right now and Port Sudan is safe. But we don't know uh, when this shall last because uh, there is a speech of escalation, of uh, new recruitment, of uh, extending the war. So maybe this is a temporary situation and will not last uh, for a long time. Yeah, Naba, you did mention uh, new recruitments. Uh, we've been getting those reports that young people are joining the armed forces in large numbers, both the army side and the RSF. What is motivating these new recruits and how is this impacting the clashes there? Uh, 
Um, what is motivating this new recruitment is uh, the youth um, vision to this war. Uh, most of the uh, people from northern uh, regions and eastern regions and central regions are seeing uh, RSF are invaders um, and they are joining the army, even the pro-democracy groups and the protesters who protested against the military rule before and uh, protested, uh, protested against uh, al-Bashir rule, now they are joining the army because they think they are defending their home against invaders. And for the RSF, they are, uh, they are joining RSF, some of the youth, because of the tribal um, issues. Uh, some tribes in uh, Western Sudan are seeing the northern uh, Sudanese people have been controlling the rule for uh, almost 60 years. And uh, they want to build a new Sudan uh, due to their vision that is not, um, a n a not big tribe is controlling the uh, rule against other uh, minorities. So it's a vision of uh, power, uh, who should control and who should rule. And the bad thing is, if this speech succeeded in joining thousands of uh, young people, we may see a new Syria and a new Libya uh, in the heart of Africa. We, we may see an extended war that will definitely impact the whole region. And of course, it will uh, morph into a civil war. So this new recruitment, uh, actually, it's fueling the extension of the war and not uh, seeking uh, a solution for the Sudanese uh, crisis. Naba, thank you for that. Naba Mohideen in Madani, Al Jazeera State in Sudan.